Hello there. In this video, I just want to wrap up our discussion of uh, pendulums. In the last video, we found the equation of motion for the spherical pendulum using uh, Lagrangian mechanics. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's go ahead and see if we can use that equation of motion of the uh, spherical pendulum to actually, you know, make some kind of simulation and actually, you know, see exactly what this would uh, end up looking like. So in the top right corner of the screen, I'll go ahead and display the, uh, the equation of motion that we derived in the last video. Um, and here we have uh, a little program in Mathematica. I don't claim to uh, be an expert programmer by any means or anything like that. Uh, I'm sure there are lots of, uh, you know, better programmers that could come through and uh, critique and nitpick, uh, you know, my, my code here. But what I want to get across are uh, kind of the key uh, ideas uh, proceeding forward from, okay, so you have an equation of motion, now what? And really, once you have the equation of motion, you know, you've really completed the problem because you can see, you know, may maybe we can't directly solve our equation of motion analytically, but with numerical methods, right, with numerical methods, I can go and plug my equation of motion in, uh, you know, and of course I need to supply some initial conditions, right? I need to apply some initial conditions. What is theta? What is theta prime at t equals zero? You know, and also what is my initial azimuthal angle phi at uh, t equals zero, right? And so I supply these initial conditions here, right? And then I could also have a, an azimuthal angular velocity right? But in the last video, we talked about how that would just be a constant related to your angular momentum. So I go ahead and I can, you know, represent that here. Uh, from here, right, once you have a solution to your differential equation, you're more or less done. You now have a function, you know, theta and phi, you have these functions of your coordinates, uh, you know, as functions of time. So at that point, you know, you're more or less completely done. Now, if you want to uh, actually see what the what this pendulum would look like, you know, in uh, in the real world, right? I need to actually convert, you know, these generalized coordinates theta and phi. I need to convert them back into Cartesian coordinates, back into just x, y, and z, so that I get a series of, you know, a series of actual locations in 3D space that'll then go and graph this, right? So when I, so when I go through and animate this, right, and we know exactly what the, uh, the conversion between spherical and polar coordinates are so i have to ultimately for each of these kind of objects that i'm uh displaying in my, in uh this little animation here right i have to plug in l which is the the length of the pendulum times and then sine theta cos phi sine theta sine phi and of course here we just have l cos theta for our z coordinate with a little minus sign, um, basically to uh, get the pendulum pointing downwards instead of upwards, because Mathematica defines the uh, the z direction in the upwards direction. Um, but yeah, so of course, if you put that all together with some uh, initial conditions, you can go ahead and end up getting, you know, some kind of uh, simulation of what this uh, actual uh, spherical pendulum motion would end up looking like for some given initial conditions, you know, and that's, uh, that's really, really powerful. So we can go ahead and analyze this in a couple of situations. What, what would we expect, right, if I were to make my angular momentum equal to zero? for example. So I go in, I set my angular momentum to zero. Okay, so we, we can go ahead and think about this. This was angular momentum about the z direction, right? So the point being, if I get rid of my azimuthal angular velocity uh, completely, I'm just going to be left with the, uh, the simple pendulum again, right? I'm just going to have oscillations back and forth just like this. So yeah, so this is really cool. So it feels like our model is, you know, reflecting what we would expect in reality. Um, 
you know, and we can go ahead and we can modify our angular momentum, start to turn that up again. And of course, now we're going to get, you know, more of this uh, uh, azimuthal uh, rotation here along with our uh, oscillations, right? So that's really cool. And we can go ahead and we can keep, you know, pulling up the angular momentum and of course we're going to expect the more that we do this you know the more uh you know angular velocity we have in this azimuthal direction and our pendulum is going to speed up more and uh more and more um you know so anyways i just wanted to make this video i'll go ahead and uh leave uh leave it here right other than this uh actual uh pendulum just that that's allowing us to visualize the model of course just seeing plots of our theta and of our phi are of course extremely useful and of course more or less theta we see oscillations phi we just see you know some line you know like it has a uh, a more or less constant uh, angular velocity because as we stated before the angular momentum in the z direction should be uh should be constant right so you know put all of that together and now we have a real feel for what the spherical pendulum is like just using the equation of motion that we derived in the last video um other than that i'll go ahead and end this video here just wanted to showcase this little uh simulation and talk about uh you know those kinds of uh key steps and getting from equation of motion to some kind of actual cool little uh, simulation like this where you can actually see what the motion of your thing would uh, look like. If you enjoyed this video, you know, consider subscribing to the channel. But uh, other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.